Welcome back to Ultimate Alchemy. And what are we going to do today? Well, I've put some signs up because I wanted to give you an idea of what we've got remaining. If we have a look at clay, <clears throat> excuse me, the recipe that we've got going, we need grass blocks and cobblestone, which we can make. Wood is easy, which and so is lapis. We can make that using the, um, uh, what is it called? Atomic Reconstructor. So that leaves us five things. Podzle, nether quartz, emerald, wither skeleton skulls, diamond, and draconium because this whole thing is made in the chaotic tier of fusion crafting which is a whole bunch of other things <laughs> including diamonds and draconium and well lapis blocks but uh, lots of other things as well but why don't we have a look at which ones of these we can actually get now to get started here i crafted a couple of things uh, first of all um, i crafted a wireless crafting grid now i've done this previously in stone block for the um, ae2 systems i didn't want to do it on camera as it's been relatively recently, I've actually done that. So, but underneath here, um, you can craft. Let's go down and take a look. Relatively easy to craft this, the wireless transmitter. Okay, so if I just go into here, and I can now use this from anywhere. We'll see why in a second. But wireless transmitter. Oh, it's not set to uh, sync. <laughs> it needs to be set to... Uh, JEI synchronized, auto selected maybe? Let's have a look. Wireless transmitter. There we go. So, relatively normal stuff that you might expect. And then we also want a wireless crafting grid, essentially, uh, which is um, not all that much of a problem either. So, wireless crafting grid. Yep. Again, it's just a regular crafting grid with a couple of the bits and pieces around it. The downside is that, of course, it won't be charged. So again, from stone block, and again, because I showed you that relatively recently in stone block, I don't want to, you know, do the same thing again. I created a flux controller, which will help. That now enables wireless charging. Just enable it here, and then go to, uh, which tab is it? No, there we go. Yep, so configure wireless charging. Remember not to charge things that are in your hands because that causes problems certainly with draconic evolution maybe with other things however this network is fed down here with a simple overclocked generator just feeding straight from infinite wood and uh, we don't have to worry about it i mean it's you know it's huge amounts of power uh, at least because it's only being used for wireless charging at the moment what we should do over time however is instead of setting up local charging now whenever we have uh, a need for it we should be able to craft flux points to pull power out of that network and then we want to add more power to the network we can just put more overclock generators in so we can share the power out among the base without having to set it up each time um in most cases i'm fine setting up locally usually but uh yeah if, if i tell the system to auto craft flux the one thing it can't do in this pack is that it seems that flux, flux itself uh this stuff uh, has no smelting recipe. In Snowden Block, you can just put it in a smeltery, which makes it really easy to uh, craft. In this uh, in this one, we would have, in this mod pack, we'd have to automate something with uh, a filtered item collector or something along. Do we have item collectors? Item collector. Well, yes, but hmm, no, actually. Uh, what else would we have? Like a vacuum? We want some kind of vacuum hopper that's filterable. Um, not seeing anything. I'll have to have a look for that. XP vacuum, vacuum chest. If the Ender IO vacuum chest is filterable, that would work. Basically, what we want to do is just drop redstone into fire or lava. And then we want to pick up only when it's flux. So that's possible with AE2, certainly. Uh, you could use like a filtered... Um, Annihilation block, annihilation, um, whatever they're called. Um, I can't remember. It doesn't have a heat to in this, but annihilation frame maybe. Yeah, and you can set a filter on it to only pick up the flux, and then you could have a lava block with, or oh, not a lava block, a fire block maybe with permanent fire on nether rack, uh, something along those kind of lines. Not quite so sure as yet, but probably a vacuum would be easier if we can get a filtered version. Anyway, that's not important right now because I've made uh, quite a fair bit of flux anyway, uh, just by dropping it into fire, you know, accidentally. Well, not accidentally. Um, <laughs> drop it into fire manually, I should say. So we can make flux ingredients. That said, however, we should, because we're going to be using it quite often, 
add this to auto crafting. So uh, patterns, do I have any more patterns than that? Yeah, I do. I have some more blank patterns. Good. We can make more if we want to. And to do that, I'm just going to set up flux uh, blocks, I want to say. Is it flux blocks? Yeah, so this needs to know how to make flux cores, which means it needs me to know how to make uh, eyes of ender. And eyes of ender are ender pearls and blaze powder, both of which we're not getting automatically as yet. We are able to make them, just not automatically. And that means we can then create a pattern for this. It's going to need obsidian fed into the system, which we've already got. Flux and this. And that means we can then create this recipe. And in turn, lastly, the flux points. Now, plugs are relatively rare that we need them. It's almost always points. So well, let's just create those. And um, we want to just distribute this a little bit. Um, but I'm not too concerned about exactly where it goes. Uh, let's just tell it to make a flux point then. Uh, flux point now. One start and uh, I could have just pressed shift, but it's almost almost instant. Flux point, and we can just keep one in our my new ender pouch that's just for tools. I tend to call that orange, 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 and um, yeah, we're well, good. Now I've kept the ender pouch, even though I've got access to this system wherever I am. I've kept the white ender pouch because the inventory tweaks stuff works with that. So if I have a lot of stuff in my inventory, let's say. Um, Mm, do I have anything over here? So let's say I had lots of iron. Okay, I, can, I would have to shift click them one at a time if I went into the crafting grid. With the ender pouch, I just control shift click and all they all go into the ender pouch and go into our system. So good, but just that's just a bit brief update what I've done between the episodes. Otherwise, everything's the same. So let's get on with today's episode. And uh, first of all, let's, let's take a look at what we need for a few things. Now, one of these quite annoys me. <laughs> And you'll see why in a minute. But uh, I think it's Podzel. Let's have a look at Podzel. Okay, Podzel is annoying. Uh, it needs a bottling machine, and that's fine, or a casting table. Again, both are fine. But it needs empowered oil onto dirt. Dirt's easy, we're getting it automatically. But empowered oil is a pain, okay? It's just a pain. Why? Because it's manual. Thankfully, we only need one podzel, so I, uh, you know, I'm not too concerned about it. I do like to ha automate everything if I can, but here we are. Okay, so to get empowered oil, we need to basically toss an empowered cannoli seed into some crystallized oil on the ground. That's the manual part. So we need to get the oil. The oil is actually uh, apart from the manual bit of throwing it in. That's relatively straightforward. We need to get canola grown. And I've put a farm down with canola. And uh, the canola we get out of that, we can put into a canola press to make canola oil. And we can use it in an oil generator, but I'm going to ignore that part. So canola press. And then we can use a fermenting barrel to turn canola into refined canola oil. And then, um, yeah. Then we can put the refined canola oil on the ground and throw in a crystallized canola seed to make crystallized oil. Right, okay, so that, that last part is manual as well. But let's get a couple of those things started. Uh, first of all, um, we want the canola press. And that is going to be hopefully straightforward, apart from this which requires a few bits and pieces. I made some of these. This is just redstone underneath the atomic reconstructor. So it's nothing uh, excessive. I made it a little bit in advance. There we go. And now we can make another press. This one's a fermenting barrel. All right. And uh, again, that should be straightforward. And then we're going to want to export canola into the canola press. So that's uh, that. Or in fact, I can probably just feed it in manually. We're not going to need a huge amount of this stuff, remember. So uh, the canola farm has already made some. It's right there at the back. You can see it's we've got the yellow flowers. Uh, identical to all the rest. There's nothing specific here other than the fact we probably want seeds. And we can grab them straight from here. Okay. Now the seeds we can convert into empowered seeds really rather easily. If we go over to the atomic reconstructor, take that off, drop the seeds in, and hit the button, we get empowered seeds. 
well, oh, crystallized seeds, I should say. Yep, the empowered comes with an empowerer and some of the I think some of the regular seeds as well. Uh, empowered. Uh, that's X powered. Empowered. Yeah, so we're going to need regular canola seeds and crystallized seeds in an empowerer. The empowerer we've made fairly recently in stone block as well, so I may well keep that one off camera. But you need like an empowerer and four of these display stands. Um, relatively straightforward to make them usually. Chisel quart ooh, quartz. Quartz might be a problem. Yeah, quartz is going to be the problem because that's not easy to make in this pack. Okay, so we're not going to get to empowered, certainly, but we can get to the earlier stages before we get to quartz. Uh, quartz has to go through Britannia as far as I'm aware. I can't find any other way of making quartz than Britannia, so we're going to have to get into that as well. Uh, why don't we just set this up and can I just stack these? Let's just go over here because I've got a cable if I need to. There we go. Whoops. Uh, yeah. I can probably get rid of this setup as well now. I'm going to have a bit of a tick rate issue around here. Let me just make sure I turn you off until I need you. Uh, is there anything else? Oh, when I say tick rate, I mean lag. So fermenting barrel, let's assume it's at the bottom. And canola press, will it auto feed? Let's give it a try. Canola press. Okay, what do you need? You need power. Okay, it's straightforward. Well, it's a good thing we have. Um, you. <laughs> Do you also need power? Fermenting barrel doesn't look like it needs power, so let's just attach, attach a flux point and select the network. Overclock power. Uh, you can configure a limit or turn it off, but that's not much of a problem. There it is, it's feeding in. And this is turning into canola oil, which is going straight down into the barrel and fermenting into refined canola oil. Good. I can just leave that alone now. Uh, we've got some of the crystallized so we're part way on Podzel. Um, let's just get a torch. These stone torches will do. So we're working on that one. That's uh, that's fine. And let's put that in my backpack. And let's put the rest away. Okay, so centrifuge. Why did I make a centrifuge? <laughs> and that's not a rhetorical question. I actually can't remember why I made a centrifuge. There are a few recipes uh, and they are all in here. Uh, you can get bees, by the way, to get into the quartz, but yeah, bees. Um, here we are. So but to, stop, to start Britannia, you need a centrifuge. And that's going to get you the petals because you can't just bone mill grass to get petals. You have to use a grass block, uh, which is straightforward. Uh, we can make grass blocks, I think. Uh, we just need dirt, which we've got. And... Um, is it a grass block? Is it only dirt or is there... Yeah, it's just dirt and compost and we can make compost. Uh, yeah, there's nine there, but we can make it with um, dirt and wheat. So let's just make a stack. There it goes. <clears throat> Pretty fast. Now it is anyway. Now we've got a wheat farm. And it'll become 64. That's fine. Let's put you away. So that will make 32. In fact, let's just... Can we actually... I wish you could actually request this while... Yeah, while this is going away. Uh, while this is uh, still full. So I want to add more while it's got a few in it. It's a bit of a pet peeve. Maybe there is a way to actually do that. Maybe it's a key, key combination. So two of those and some dirt. And all we need is then a... Um, is it carpenter? A uh, grass block. Yeah, it's just a carpenter. And we probably have one around. Yeah, because I've removed the setup over here that was was doing compost. We don't need it anymore. Uh, that means, we, however, we do need to deal with this. So uh, that's straightforward again. Um, carpenter, we're going to just be getting infinite water, aren't we? So we're going to need a ender tank. Uh yeah, a few will do. And anything in the centrifuge? I don't think so. I think that's just going to need some power, though. So let's just make another flux point. I mean, I could share the flux points, but, you know, if we've got enough to make them, yeah, we do, then we may as well just make one and uh, get it out of the way. Uh, so as you can see, in our base here, we're largely removing setups and then adding setups as we actually go. You know, it's all clean back here now, nothing around. I've removed everything. Um, same thing around here. What I may actually do is... 
have a second smeltery. I think I'm going to need a smeltery for something else fairly soon, so I may well have the bank of smelteries along this back thing here, and then we'll have you know, temporary setups here. We can do pretty much all this with auto crafting now, but I decided to uh, to ideally wait and then do it later because that, that, that will be more stock keeping because I want to keep a certain number of the processes in stock and it requires a few bits and pieces. So I'm going to leave it alone for now. It works perfectly well and we've got hundreds of those processes. So I'm not going to be too worried about it. And I am going to need a little bit jittery frame rates. Uh, the other thing I was going to say is I rearranged everything here. It's now a little bit neater. Just to explain, underneath there, there's easy ender chests at the back. They're translocating from the sides of these casting tables and casting um, basins. The mechanical users are underneath and they're on off, but there is one underneath the controller which is permanently on. Um, that that's just happens. To, I'd like to have control over it. But that will probably need an ender porcupine or something like that to, to do that. And I'm not too worried about it just for now. And now I've added redstone to all of these. So I can just flip them on or off with a switch rather than trying to hit the center sections. And then around here, I've also got this setup. Now, this was from uh, a picture I saw on Reddit of a nice setup. For this, it's a little bit more compact. And it also now allows us to work at full speed. My previous setup required me not to use the glowstone mode because when it was inserting stone, it was, doing so, it was doing so slower than this whole thing could actually feed stuff into it, so it wasn't making the combination of the two things. Now, when you do it like this, uh, it's turning on the export from the smeltery at the same time as importing, and in turn, that means that everything will work at full glowstone speed. Um, it, it's just really quite fast now when I decide to add things. So you just put whatever you want to combine, i.e. whatever you want to put in the casting basin first into the box, and then flip the switch and then it will just pour straight out into here and then back into our system into the triple white channel okay all right um everything over here is sorted so let's just go and set this up we want the centrifuge uh first of all and then the carp well the carpenter actually is going to be on top maybe so let's just put it um and yeah, running out of room i should probably remove this as well this is for making uh, ender shards and I should probably do that in the auto crafting system at some point. So let's just assume it goes here for now. Uh, centrifuge. Carpenter. And why don't we just put the tank on top? Because, hey, make it nice and straightforward. Turn that around. We're now storing water in the system as well, by the way. I did the same thing as I did with lava. So I'm not going to show that again. Um, our generation of water goes into the blue, blue, white. And then whenever I make a default ender tank, that will be configured to triple white, which is the output from our system. And the system is actually got a four. Well, it's full already. <laughs> well, only thing I will say about this is be careful when you put these down. By default, these will start feeding in whatever fluid it can. And if you do that, um, if, <laughs> for example, we're feeding, trying to feed in more lava still, even now, it's trying to import from these lava source tanks. And if you put another one down, it will try and feed uh, miscellaneous into them. So if you do that, then configure them with filters and set yourself up a little something like this, an exporter that works on redstone mode or something. You put a lever by the side of it if you like, or just change that back to always. Set it to fluids and then basically configure the fluid here and it will pull out of the system. Do that after you turn off the fluid storage block, i.e. up here, turn it off. So it's not gonna, it's not gonna try and pull out of the, the fluid block you want but it will pull back from anywhere else in the system that that fluid is in, and it'll put it into a trash can. Little hint, uh, easy way to clean out your system if you need to. All right, so Carpenter, uh, we are going to just do a uh, recipe here. And is it there, or is it the, oh, it's the top one, isn't it? Well, let's forget this. There we go. It's going to make grass blocks. Uh, once it has some power, that is. Power will just show on the back. And select a network. Uh, do you need power as well? You need power. Okay, so we'll just use... We shouldn't need anything terribly fast here, so we're just going to use some energy conduit. Pop you down. And you're sorted. Okay. So we're going to grab you. And that's uh, grass blocks. And then centrifuge is going to get us some petals. And I'm not... Go well, I've not hooked them together right now. I guess I could hook them together. Uh, do we have any flat... Uh, flat, 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 transfer nodes. Can we do this while they're still together? 
Hopefully we can. Uh, maybe. Maybe not. Hmm. Uh, in that case, fine. I'll just grab this. I also made this an Obsidian AIOT. Not hard to make. It's just the Obsidian tools all combined. And it basically acts as all the tools and has a large durability. Very useful for having. And here is our output. So let's just configure that to be an output. There we go. In come the grass blocks and we should get petals out on this side. And that's exactly what we want. So we can then, I don't know, um, uh, there's no reason why we can't just get this back into our system. And that is going to be straightforward with some translocators. There we go. Let's knock that floor through again. Make it easy to get on my selection. There we go. Okay. Are you going to go autom- Yeah, it's already going in there automatically. So now we should be generating the Batania uh, petals. Yep. It's random which one we get. Uh, the pure daisy, however, is the, the sort of gateway into Batania, aside from, you know, Petal Apocathory. Uh, we're going to need some slabs. Uh, Petal Apocathory. <laughs> Doesn't really matter which color you use for that. And uh, we need seeds. And we need water. Some infinite water source. So in our case... I guess we can try and use the water the end the tank, but the only problem is I also remember that Petal Apocrypha used to have problems uh, putting water into it. And if we can do that automatically, I'm uh, I'm a I'm, I'm definitely a fan. <laughs> that never used to be the case, but uh, you know, if we can, we can. Um these are this is our farm area, but it is sort of appropriate for Batania, so maybe we should fill this out with dirt on either side here. And then use this as our Batania area, the sort of foreground to the rest of our farms. I sped the whole thing up with um, a wand of acceleration. And it could be that me getting it, well, me being really unlucky. But it looks like the white petal, which is what you need to get started, is the rarest. <laughs> or at least its drop chance is lower. I don't have a large enough statistical, statistical sample to determine that. And it doesn't show up on here. It just shows me the other colours. They're all equal chance there. So it could be equal chance, but I've got four of them now. I tried hooking this up. I really did. Uh, it won't take liquid. Uh, sorry, the petal apocryphy won't take liquid transposers. You can't just put this next to it and then, you know, turn the app on. So we've got to book it on an item frame easily, uh, easily to deal with it. And we can just shift left click to get our bucket. And uh, that will let us do this, hopefully. So one two, three, four, and that'll make a pure daisy. Good, we just need some seeds, and we get a pure daisy. All right. Now, as you can see, the uh, the grass is starting to spread. Pure daisy, um, we can do a bunch of stuff with. I'm probably going to want another one at least, but that will get me started with um, making living rock, which will get us a mana um, altar, whatever it's called. Um, runic altar? No, not runic altar. Um, mana pool. There we go. Yeah, mana pool. Uh, we can just go with the default one. I just need five living rock. And has our system generated more petals yet? In fact, do I have range here yet? I do. I have been crafting range upgrades. Only four will go in one of those transmitters, so I'm not sure how you get even higher range. Uh, is there anything you can do with a range upgrade to make it even better? Or does it just need more wireless transmitters? Uh, nothing we can do with it. Okay, wireless transmitter. Wireless. It's got a range of about 50 blocks now, I think, with, with four of them in there. But it doesn't tell me how to get even higher range. I sort of want infinite range if I can do, um, but that may just require more wireless transmitters, you know, on a cable or something like that. That'll do if we need to do it that way. Uh, where was I? Yes, petals. Uh, petals? Yeah, we've got enough for a, a couple more, so let's just uh, get those. And uh, pop them in here. So again, simple. Uh, we'll also make this later, maybe, uh, to get this done. And uh, should we make another one? Yeah, why not? All right. And then we've got to think about what we use for fuel or mana. 
Um, now, since we've got infinite um, infinite wood, it will be useful to have a system to use that. So why don't we just put this down uh, here? And then we can just put some wood down around that as well. That'll make us some living wood. Okay, do we ha even have... Um... No, we don't have Vein Manor. <laughs> I was holding on a tilt key, hoping that Vein Manor was around. Vein Manor is very dangerous on a... Whoops. On a um, <laughs> Skyblock map, as you might imagine. There we go. All right, so we've got a spare few days here in case we need one. Is it, do we have wireless crafting out here? No, we're out of range just... Uh, how about here? Oh, just about. So we can put that back in. And I probably want a chest anyway out here for for uh, to put our uh, seeds in. But uh, let's just make more living rock. All right, so we can now make the, uh, the, the altar. And why don't I just go and grab this crafting grid from over here and move it a little closer. That'll do, and we'll just drop it down there. All right, so nice little crafting area for us, and we've got living rock, uh, living wood now as well. Okay, so we're gonna need a mana spreader, and we're gonna need uh, a particular flower to get started. Uh, probably end of flames, I would have thought, um, to get us started. Let's have a look. What are, what's the crafting recipe for? Uh, we know what the mana pool is. Mana spreader. Um, yep. So that is living wood. Any petal and a gold. That's relatively straightforward as well. So we can just make that right now. Let's just put this stuff in the system. So one mana spreader. I uh, don't want to use white petals just in case that is rarer. Uh, we've, oh, I've got loads now. <laughs> it doesn't much matter. We've got one mana spreader going. And we want a wonder forest. Because I always get things wrong with the mana spreader. And I think I actually will use want to use white petals for that. We need twigs. Oh, I'm going to need more. <laughs> I'm going to need more wood. That's okay. I don't want to very long. This should be done shortly. Um, what else get for? Oh, actually, it's just done now. There we go. So just three twigs should be enough, and uh, we've got more than enough for that. So um, one, two, three. I already had some in the system, but that'll, that'll just let me make another one if I need to. Get that crafted, so three of those. And petals. And again, I will use the white ones for this because I quite like uh, using those. Or blue, I normally go for blue as well. So we've got a mana spreader, we just need a mana pool. So let's put the living rock away. Mana pool. And I usually end up needing two of these anyway, so why don't I see if I can craft two? Yep, I can craft two. And then we can get going. Uh, we need an end of flame. Endo flame? Yeah. Uh, that's going to need brown, two brown, a red, and a light gray. Okay. So petals. And I'm going to need more than this, so let me just make three batches. Or at least grab three batches. Uh, so I need six of those, three of those, and then light gray, three of those. And that was everything, wasn't it? Because it was just a batch of four like that. I'll just make the first one on camera, then skip forwards. So I'll grab you, in you go. And then, in fact, I probably should keep that <laughs> for my own purposes. And then just uh, drop them in. And that's actually pretty fast. No need to skip forward. Whoops, don't need that. This is why I'd like it to be automatically refilled. There is a way to do that in Batania itself, but we'll get to that uh, fairly soon. All right, so now we've got three end of flames. We've got a mana spreader and a mana pool. So let's just grab a mana pool. Let's assume we just do our first thing over here. Uh, let's put a mana pool down. We want our mana spreader going, pointing straight at it. So let's just say here. And then for now, um, why don't I just put two of these down, one either side. 
and they will take anything that burns. So uh, I'm just going to grab something that's uh, a little bit better than uh, our wood, just to start them off. We can use charcoal, I think. Can we use charcoal blocks, maybe? Um, no indication of how how much better the charcoal blocks are than, than charcoal, but should be nine times, unless it increases somehow. Are you going to take it to burn? Yep, you are. All right, and we'll automate that whole process. Normally what you do is some sort of um, pressure plate, and then you use the pressure plate's redstone signal to feed into a dropper of some kind, and then that will then, you know, uh, basically, whenever there is no... Um, when there is no signal, i.e. There's, there's nothing on the pressure plate, it will then drop another one onto the pressure plate. And it will continue doing that, and then there will always be an item here. Um, if it despawns, it will pick up another one, so, you know, get the idea. All right, this is generating mana. Good. We've got started in Britannia. And also, just it's the last few minutes of the episode, but to get to Thorncraft, we're going to need this eerie mask. And that is going to need mana infused string, which should be straightforward now. We have string. And hopefully we have a little bit of mana. So let's just grab some string, of which we've got lots of it. And we're going to need, um, let's just see, what is it? Floral grey powder. So that's going to need a pestle and mortar and mystical grey. Uh, pestle? I don't think I've crafted one of those this, uh, but that shouldn't be hard. Uh, it needs bowls. I always thought this should be made out of stone, not, not not wood, but yeah, that's just me. Um, petals. And we want grey. Um, probably eight, isn't it? So, um, eight. Put those away. And then we just, do we just craft that with this? Yeah, we just craft that with this. And then we have eight floral grey and some string. Uh, if we have enough mana to convert this into string, we do. Yeah, mana infused string. And then we can just go back over here, print a ring of this stuff. Eerie mask. Okay, the eerie mask in turn, um, we can then use with dirt to make mutated grass. And then mutated grass, we combine, oh, well, we first of all can make into infused grass, but let's do the, the mutated grass first of all. Uh, we need some dirt, so I've not got enough. Let's grab some more. It's really nice once you got all this. This all comes from automating dirt. It seems like the, the most trivial things to actually do, but uh, it's very, very worthwhile. We can also make more eerie masks if we need to. Okay, and then I'm just going to take, because uh, this is the recipe is split between the product of this and this itself, so we need to just uh, put this down. Okay, and the Pure Daisy should sort that one out for us. So back through the eerie mask to mutated grass. We then need to get to Living Rock, which we've got, and then Terra Steel. Now, Terra Steel is the thing that's going to actually stop us from getting to this Rune of Balance. So, Terra Steel, you may remember that if we want to get Terra uh, Steel ingots, we have to make the, the Elven Portal. So, that's going to take me a little while to get to, and we, we can't get to it this episode. But we're almost there, guys. We're almost at uh, Thorncraft to get the Rune of Balance, of course. And once the Rune of Balance comes through, you throw that through the portal as well. And then you start getting uh, the crystals from Thorncraft, which we can then in turn use and get other stuff out of them. So Titanic Petrothium, Salis Mundus is the actual thing we, we need, of course, uh, but we, you know, we're not going to have that. So we're going to go through a pulverizer at first, gets a 20% chance of Salis Mundus. So we're going to want at least five of these, if not more. And the Salis Mundus in turn, we can start using to, for other purposes, uh, Purifying Bath Salts, uh, I think we just want to use it on a bookshelf to get the Thormonomicon, if I remember rightly, something like that. Yeah, so I'm going to need to actually get Terra Steel for all of that. And here we are anyway. Is that? Oh, that oh no. Ooh, I'm going to have to create another mask. <laughs> Not that that's hard, um, but uh, the important part is that uh, I need Silky Touch as well. So I'm going to go and make, in fact, did I? Like, oh, let me just do this at the end of the episodes. I think I already made the prerequisite for uh, getting Silk Touch enchantment. Uh, you need an arcane ensorcellator. And yes, I did say that correctly. Thank you. Yeah, here it is. Um, I put uh, the, the, the Statue of the Thinkers that we're already making for these 
will turn into liquid XP, essentially, if you put them in a magma crucible. So I did that. And then that feeds into an arcane and sorcerator, which you can then use for silk touch. So if I just grab silk touch. Uh, yeah, so it's glowstone and a book. Books, uh, as you might imagine, come from paper and everything else and leather. And of course, we have sugarcane for paper now. And we have leather from the fish. So we have a book and glowstone. Uh, there we go. Just grab some glowstone, just one. And that should be it for that enchantment. And we're going to need an anvil, obviously, uh, which I've got two. So let's just grab an anvil. Um, whoa, whoa. I'll put the anvil on this side, I guess. Uh, let's just knock that wall through. Eek. Maybe not there. Yeah, it's only showing part of a block. Mm, I'll have to move that later. In any case, let's just get that enchantment so I can pick up that grass. Uh, one, two, and then... Uh, is that it? Uh, do I need anything else? Silk touch? Uh, energy... I should get a book. I've got Essence of Knowledge. Why aren't you working? Um, okay. Very, very... Oh, no, it is working. It's just very, very slow. <laughs> okay, good. All right, so that should get me the enchant for Silky Touch on my AIOT. And then I can then use that to pick up the grass and obviously I'll make another mask off camera. But that's going to start it into Britannia. We'll need to get through Terra Steel over there as well. That will maybe next episode um, and I'll show you how to get to that. It's not terribly complicated, but you're going to want some kind of automated way of getting mana because while it's open, it uses constant mana. Okay. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the episode, guys. We've got it started into Britannia. We've got... Um, basically canola oil which we can't get any further without quartz yeah refined canola oil we need quartz for that for that to go further because we can't make the empower without quartz and then we've also got set up here for basically uh grass blocks and turning them straight into petals for Britannia. pretty pleased hopefully enjoy the episode feel free to like subscribe share if you have Thumbs up, obviously, and uh, click the bell if you want to get notifications. Otherwise, don't. And, of course, you can follow me on Twitter at GreyDuster if you want to get notifications that way. And, as always, guys, thanks for watching.